October, finally! Which means Halloween is right around the corner. Yes! I like Halloween. If you can't tell. <laughs> so, my homework's done. I'm very tired. And I thought, let's do a really big makeup look. So here we are. <laughs> this is going to involve a little bit of making and a little bit of application inspired by an amazing time-lapse tutorial I saw and will link somewhere, probably down below. Always read the description. So yeah, uh, this is going to be my take on a voodoo doll stitch punky thing. I don't really know how to describe it. It's going to be messy and it's going to be a lot of fun. So, if you're down for a little bit of prop making and a little bit of application, well, let's go. <laughs> Golly gosh, that made me look pale. Remind me never to use a black t-shirt on a black background. Note to self. Anywho, we are starting this look with good old masking tape. And without any particular length, applying three bits of tape and tapering the edges. Using the same idea, we are going to make little squares of tape, three strips by three strips, and three layers. So I guess it doesn't really matter what side you go over twice. I feel like I should make a bonus video titled Phoebe's Shenanigans with Masking Tape because I messed up doing this so many times. So, there's the fun making bit, two strips and two squares. Using a sponge, I'm stabbing through the middle of the square with a needle, which will come in handy later, and cutting big X's about one centimetre from each corner. It'll make sense why later. Do that for both of the masking tape squares. Now, because thread is too thin and wouldn't show up on camera, I'm using wool, which I am expertly dyeing in Sanazaru black face paint. Yeah, I, I was feeling lazy. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever tried to dye wool, but it's a bit tricky. So with that done, I thread it through the largest needle I could find, and sew together in a crisscross pattern the masking tape strips made earlier. As you can probably tell, I am not very good at sewing. Nor do I think I ever will be. So please don't judge my awful sewing skills. Well, there we go. Two pieces sewn together and two squares. That's the making out the way. Time for the makeup. I start the look by latexing the, what shall we call it? Stitch? Stitches? Anywho, I latex them to my mouth and seal it at the edges with tissue and more latex. This is always a fun bit, I love doing this. Sadly, due to natural daylight, this camera has made it look really washed out 
And you'll understand my annoyance later when it comes to painting it that you can't see a lot of the colour and definition that I put into it. <sighs> And also, when you're doing this, try not to latex over your nose. I kind of forget that I need to breathe, so if you're doing this, please bear that in mind. And also, hair dryers are very useful. With the latexing done, I am using a Pritt stick to block out my eyebrows. Normally, I do about three layers and then seal over the glue with latex and all this really does is it protects your eyebrows and makes sure you don't rip them off by accident because that wouldn't be very good please make sure you use a water soluble glue when doing this I don't want to be held responsible if you use super glue or something I would not advise that With my eyebrows now blocked out, I take one of the squares and hold it over my eye. The lower corner will have to naturally be cut on a diagonal to accommodate for your nose, unless you are Voldemort, and depending on where your hairline is, so will the diagonally opposite corner. And then, just like before, tissue and latex. Ordinarily, I would use a lot of latex to make a smooth, flesh-like finish. However, given that this is meant to be a voodoo doll and stitched and not human, don't feel like you have to make it perfect. A variety of textures always looks good. Using the same method, complete the other eye. And do make sure you can see, your depth perception will be a little impaired. So, now that's done, I'm using Snazaroo colours, as per always, this time in black and yellow. Again, you can't, <laughs> you can't really see the definition of the colour here, but this one was very gungy, greeny, grey, icky colour. Then I'm going over it in red, to kind of make it somewhat more flesh-like. Now, this is where I screwed up. Naturally, this look demands that you paint your eyes black before you put the eyepieces on. However, I jumped the gun and was too excited to do it, and then had to peel away the eye crosses? Oh, whatever. So if you're doing this look, make sure you paint your eyes black before you latex this onto your face because then you kind of stab yourself in the eye with a paintbrush and that is not fun still with that completed i go over the wool stitches in a very diluted black paint the more watery it is the more the wool can absorb it which is better than applying it too thick 
Going in now with Snazzery Red and Black, I create pinpricks, I guess would be the best way to describe it. And smudge some ready blacky ich, around the eye crosses. And this just helps to break up the colour of the general tan appearance. With that done, I again go over the pinpricks and the eye crosses with a little bit of fake blood. Because anyone who knows me knows I love fake blood. 